Hello everybody and welcome back to Blanche Case Fitness. It's Saturday and you know what that means. It's time for the weekend kickoff, our awesome strength and stamina focused body weight class. And woo, I am feeling things today. Hi everybody. Happy Saturday. I hope you're, uh, if this is your official weekend, I hope it's starting off well. And if this is still a work day for you, then I hope that class is a great way to kick that off. Um, yeah. Hey, hey everybody. Woof. Yeah, I am, you know, this is the end of my first post rest week, week of exercise and activity. And as you all know, I've been doing a lot this week. Lots of walking, uh, as per usual. I actually busted out my bike for the first time and like not for a long ride, just to get to and from the park for uh, a meetup with some friends, but got on the bike, actually did some, uh, did some riding there. And then uh, yesterday morning kicked off with a hike instead of, uh, instead of a walk, which was absolutely fantastic. Um, but hike plus functional home fitness definitely equals, ooh, I am sore today. <laughs> um, so I have a feeling that uh, we'll be doing more like active stretch exercises during today's class, which will be nice, I think. But uh, yeah, how's it going? I hope everybody's made it through their week pretty well. Um, you know, it is a beautiful day right now, and uh, we may end up with some of our, our famed afternoon thunderstorms today, which as if you know me at all, and most of you do, would not go amiss. Um, so that'll be nice, but it is a stunning day, and the leaves are just about totally in on the trees. Oh man, it is beautiful, absolutely beautiful, so green outside my window, uh, which I appreciate, but yeah, I am, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, but in a good way, you know, because again, as with everything else, there, there are different qualities to pain, there are different qualities to exhaustion, and as we learn more and communicate more uh, within the total body system that is this human form, um, we start to learn the, to be able to differentiate between them. So yeah, I am, I'm definitely tired today, but it is not an overtraining tired, um, or, uh, you know, a mental health tired or anything it is just the tired that you feel when you get to the end of a week that's been full of a lot of good movement, a lot of good exercise, some adventure and you're uh, ready to take it a little bit easy. So I'll definitely be paying attention to that today. Um, cause again, trying to model all those healthy behaviors <laughs> that I am constantly telling you to try to do, right? Uh, you know, I think it's kind of important for me to model them myself. So, hey, but, oh my goodness. Yeah. I did not make my double eggs last night. I'm making them this morning. <laughs> So anybody who uh, anybody who was there uh, at last night's class for uh, for that <laughs> is probably giggling to themselves. But yes, uh, there will be there will be deviled eggs coming into existence this morning. It's a pretty quick recipe. I mean, the longest the longest component of it is I was going to say is hard boiling the eggs, but it's not, it's peeling the eggs. The longest component is definitely peeling the eggs. Um, but you, once you make it through that, it's fine. Anyway, I, we don't need to talk about deviled eggs again. So we, we did that a lot in yesterday's class. Um, oh. And I, I know that my, um, my cards right now don't reflect the updated class schedule. So I'll be, uh, I'll be futzing with that. Um, but for anyone who missed it this past week, uh, two classes have now changed their start time. So our perpetual motion class on Tuesdays now starts at 5.30, not 5.45. So just a 15 minute difference. Uh, a bigger difference on Fridays, our functional home fitness class now starts at 5 p.m rather than 6 p.m. All these times are mountain times, uh, as per usual, 
But, uh, but yeah, it seemed to work out quite well for everybody this week. It definitely worked out well for me. So I appreciate it. I appreciate your willingness to, to, uh, shift around the schedule a little bit. It's interesting because like, obviously streamers shift around schedules, um, you know, a, a lot. And like, sometimes you just have to do that. Uh, but it feels different to me because I'm teaching a class. So it's something that I want people to be able to participate in. Um, and like, also, you know, if you're just hanging out on stream, like cool, but it, it's something that I do want people to be able to participate in as it's happening, which means that I do have to keep in mind the timing of when, when I go live with streams um, in a way that I think a lot of other streamers don't necessarily have to although obviously any streamer has to think about like when their viewers are available but it's just just things i've been uh m meditating on <laughs> nothing nothing major i've been thinking too we talked about this a while ago um i would love to add like a flexibility focused class um and but I need to do a lot of research for that because my experience with like flexibility work is all dance based, um, you know, but that's not necessarily going to translate to a fitness class. Um, the kinds of things that I would do if I was teaching a dance class um, are, are, you know, it does it, it it's not a one-to-one -one correlation so I'm gonna have to do some digging into like what flexibility focused classes look like that aren't yoga because I'm not a yoga instructor you know and maybe nothing like that exists maybe really in America we do focus in on like having yoga be the you know this is our flexibility class um I don't know I don't know there, there's got to be a way to build a flexibility class that's not yoga, but is also not, hey, suddenly you're taking a modern dance class. Like, if you want to take a modern dance class on this channel, I will absolutely consider it. Although I've never been a dance teacher, just a dancer. But anyway, things that I'm thinking about. I feel like my brain is all over the place this morning, which is fine. So you're just, you know, you're getting, getting a snapshot into... My brain trying to figure its crap out. <laughs> um, but in the meanwhile, I'd say it's time for class because my shoulder is really bothering me. So let's get started. Um, let's do a pre-class checklist, everybody. You have your water in whatever vessel you are using. Mm. I, I mean, I was very impressed with my mason jar until one of our... Um, one of, our, one of my students uh, during last night's class sent me a picture of her giant like gallon jug water bottle and I was like, ooh, that puts, uh, that puts my mason jar to shame a little bit. <laughs> um, so lots of water, we like having water. You've got your comfy clothes on, whatever that means to you. You've got your mat or mat size space on the floor. And if you use a fitness wearable, we can turn them on right now to a high intensity interval training setting. If you don't, don't worry, it's not a requirement. It's not even a recommendation. Like quite frankly, fitness wearables are a tool. Uh, some people find them really useful, particularly people who are more motivated by having uh, more data to examine and to use. Um, and if that's something that inspires you or motivates you, then absolutely get one. But um, if you've tried them and you're like, oh my God, I really hate this thing, or just you're like, oh my God, that's so expensive, or it, it is not by any means uh, a requirement or even something that I would be like, yeah, you should really get one. Like, no, if it helps you, awesome. And if it doesn't, don't worry about it because whether or not this thing's on my wrist, I'm still getting a good workout. <laughs> uh, and that's a good thing to remember. Also, always remember, oh, sorry. Ah! always remember that you can change settings. You know, like the Apple Watch does a lot of like, 
hey, hey, you're usually farther along, or hey, here's this random badge I just made up and you won it. Good job. You didn't know you were going for that, but you were. Um, and I just turned off all the notifications because I was like, this is not useful to me. I like, there's some of the visualization of data that helps to motivate me to, you know, get out for my daily walks. Uh, but that's really all I use it for. That's fine. So even if you have one, oh my God. Yep. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. There's a hair in my mouth. Um, even if you have one, you can adjust how you use it. Okay. And always make sure that it's a tool that's working for you. Okay. Not a tool that you're trying to force yourself to use because somebody was like, Oh, it's the thing. Uh, no, if it's not useful to you, take it off, throw it in the sea. Don't throw it in the sea. That that's pollution. We, with the sea is having enough trouble as it is. Um, okay. Bam, bam, bam. I'm gonna get started. We're gonna get started. We're gonna do our warm up. I, I'm, yeah, I'm all over the place this morning. Man, ah. <laughs> look, it's okay. It's you know just past nine a.m. on a Saturday. I know you all understand uh, how you know humans operate. How sometimes they're more tired than other times. And we were literally just talking about that. So. Let's do our warm up, my friends. On your mats, on your backs. One foot cross over the opposite knee. And as soon as that horn goes off, we will begin with hip rocks and bridges. Oh, yeah. oh good gravy. <laughs> wow. That is, that is definitely an experience. I think that, um, so we did weighted leans last night in functional home fitness as uh, as our abdominal exercise. And I'm, I'm thinking that when we do that, I need to do a little bit more in-depth stretching afterwards because that exercise, you know, obviously engages the, the core and is focused on the core, but it requires a lot of complementary stabilization with the, with the back muscles as well. And that's what's really feeling stiff for me this morning. So figuring out some way to better stretch out that area. Everything's coming back to, to stretching and flexibility right now. And, you know, I'm kind of glad because we, I've been talking about doing a class like that for a while. And I think that it really would be a good overall addition to what we're doing. You know, because we've got, we've got body weight classes on lock. We're, we are good to go with those. We've got our strength training class pretty well balanced out. Um, but uh, flexibility is such a great part of our overall fitness and um, there are so few activities that really focus in on it um, in a safe way. And part of it is, as we've talked about, you know, you stretch differently when you're just starting class than when you get to the end of class. So you sort of intensify the depth of stretching as your muscles warm up. Um, but you want to stick with more active stretches at the beginning of class so that you're not uh, overworking those muscles right off the bat. Because again, stretching is not uh, the natural state of affairs for our muscle fibers. When our muscle fibers are told, hey, it's time to activate, they go, cool, I'm going to contract. That is what they do 100% of the time. And they can lengthen obviously um because uh they have to do that a lot but the reason that they lengthen is not because they're doing anything different the reason that they lengthen is because whatever outside external force we are applying to them is stronger than their 
ability to their internal forces they try to contract and because of that they will lengthen but it's again it's not because they're not still over there trying to contract and so we have to pay attention to how we're stretching because the stretching exercises that we do are generally lengthening exercises they're eccentric muscle actions and if we're not paying attention to how we're doing that then you know we can end up with micro tears or worser tears you know straining our muscles straining some of the connective tissue stuff like that so it's you know i don't want to just like show up on the mat for an hour and and uh do a bunch of uh static stretches because that's not the best way to work on our flexibility and it's not the best way to be safe while stretching um but a class like that would have a very different warm-up structure that's for sure and oh, i'm thinking about this now though i i'm feeling a little inspired this morning i'm not gonna lie i feel like I feel like that would be such a good addition. And it might be a, a shorter stream, you know? It might end up not being a full hour, I'm not sure. Um, or maybe it would be. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be my next big research push, which is exciting, because I haven't really had uh, a research push that super grabbed me in a while. Um, plus, this gives me an opportunity to check out uh, training resources through uh, my certification uh, entity and see what work, what uh, recommendations others have and see how I can integrate it in to what I'm doing here. So many possibilities, man. You can tell it's spring. There's just a general lightening of spirit and uh, an increase in just motivation to try new things and see how they work out. Uh, and I really like that. I think that is a really cool thing to do. Oh, oh my goodness. Well, mostly I'm just talking about stretching because I really want to be stretching right now. We're going to we're going to have a nice long stretching sequence at the end of class today. I can already tell cuz oof. First week back is no joke and I'm quite pleased. It's gone well. It's felt good, but I can definitely feel uh that the rest week was well needed, you know? Um, and that's the goal. That is absolutely the goal, is to take care of ourselves by taking our rest as seriously as we take our exercise. Uh, and to, you know, use it as a reminder that we don't have to dive right back into full intensity. We can ramp up, we can move, through stages, all right? Especially those of us here, you know, where our goal is, we just want to be as active and as healthy as we can be throughout our lives. Like, we're not in a rush to hit the top of the summit. And uh, because of that, it's okay for us to, it's okay for us to take our time take our time to uh, reach some of those goals. Ugh. But yeah, I am, I am feeling it. Ugh. Holy crap. My legs in particular. I mean, that makes sense. I went hiking yesterday, but dang. They are, they're like, oh yeah, you went hiking yesterday and uh, I can feel that now. I'm like, oh, all right. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I thought that I'd been, uh, I thought that I'd already strengthened you pretty well, but obviously, obviously there, was, there are still heights that we can, we can achieve 
And that's just so cool. I talked about that the other day. Just the fact that, like, even with things, dust, ah, even with things that we've been doing for years or decades, like, there are always new things that we can learn, new things that we can try. We're always going to identify areas where we have not necessarily been you know, doing an exercise correctly, didn't realize it, and get to sort of update that font of knowledge. And there'll always be, you know, new things to try as our knowledge expands. Um, and that's just so exciting. That, that keeps me going. Um, that variation and that knowledge that, like, no matter how long I'm teaching or you know, moving and doing various activities, there's always going to be more for me to learn and figure out. And that's really cool. Oh my goodness. Torso rotations today are particularly feeling those lower back muscles that were uh, getting worked by those side uh, those weighted leans last night. Oh man. Yup, yup, yup. Nice big breaths as we move through our warm up. Obviously, I do not get to demonstrate breathing techniques all that frequently because I'm talking the whole time. But I do try to remind you uh, as often as I can. Nope, I almost skipped an exercise. Wow. It's been a while since, uh, since that's happened. Uh, I think that was my, my quads subconsciously being like, do we really have to do squats right now? Can't we just move on to the thing that's going to be a little bit stretchier? And yes, quads, we do in fact have to do some, uh, do some squats. It's okay. We're not doing a ton, but it is important for checking in on that form. And as part of our boot up sequence, <laughs> we, we have to just do it. Just gotta do it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Oh, stretch, stretchy, stretch, stretch. Ooh. This is, this is one of my favorites. And this is obviously a really nice active stretch that we have built into the warm up. Uh, these lunges going back and forth, really settling in and stretching out, opening up the front of the hip flexors, but we don't stay there super long so that we're not, uh, we're not overtaxing that area right at the beginning. Uh, and reaching our arms straight up into the air. Not, I'm not, at, I'm not trying to reach behind myself. There's obviously a curve to my back just because of the position but not because I'm trying to reach behind myself. But now we are in our wide squat position, twisting our shoulders one at a time in towards the midline. So first one, then the other, just getting that twist in the upper spine. Since we already got the twist in the lower spine, we've got our hands on our knees. That's gonna help us keep them safely over our feet, not caving in towards one another. So enjoy it because frequently, uh, frequently when we do the wide squat position, you do not have that help, that lever. You have to just activate your muscles in order to be able to maintain that position. So enjoy. All righty. <sighs> Now, for our cardio section of the warm-up, our last three 
and trees, always remembering that just because we have hit the cardio section with the warm-up does not mean that we are going full tilt ahead. We are still, do I always forget to do this on the mat? We are still, um, we are still doing our boot up sequence. So you do not have to be doing enormous jumping jacks right now. I'm doing pretty bare minimum ones myself. So this is just an opportunity to get your heart rate up a little bit, get your breath going a little bit faster, moving that oxygen more quickly through the body and just continuing to remind body and mind that yes, we are working out for the next hour. Uh, well, the next 45 minutes, we're, we're so close. Oh. And then our kick throughs. Remember, there are so many different components to the kick through. We've got our shoulder engaged here uh, and strong holding up the torso. We've got the standing leg at that 90 degree angle, knee pointing up towards the ceiling. So we don't want to let the butt come all the way down to the ground and we don't want to let the knee cave forward as with everything else. We want that knee safely over the foot. All right. So it is totally fine to take your time on that exercise. All right. Hey, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Finishing out with some burpees. Remember, wave push up. Hey, yeah. And nice big victory clap at the top of the exercise. Okay, yeah, here's our final section of the warm up. And then we'll get to drink a little water and we'll get to relax a little bit and then find out what the next part of class is gonna look like. Huzzah, huzzah. Ah. How are we feeling? Feeling good? Feeling warmed up? Oh, good job, everybody. Okay. Yeah, morning class. So much less stuffy in here than usual. Oh, for fuck's sake. Gross. Yeah. No. Goodbye. Yep. Sorry, everybody. <sighs> okay. There we go. There we go. Ugh. Sorry, friends. That's always really fucking irritating to have to do. Um. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Look, look. Just another reminder, there are plenty of places out there that you can go 
for sexual content. And that's awesome. All right. Find a fucking OnlyFans account that you can follow. Okay. What we're doing here is an exercise class. All right. That's our focus. That's what we're here for. So if you show up in my fucking chat and start getting grossly sexual with me, a total stranger, because yes, I am a fucking stranger to you, then you are immediately getting banned. You're immediately getting blocked. You're getting reported. Bye-bye. I have basically a one strike policy because I do not have the time or the emotional bandwidth to deal with stuff. So just, just fucking don't. What's the matter with you? <laughs> like, do you think that I want to see that? Do you think that I am interested in that information from you, a total stranger? No, no, I am not. All right. We're here to exercise. Fuck. This is going to be a great VOD, by the way. Oh my God. All right. Well, that took up three minutes of my time that could have been better spent exercising. So that's what we're going to go back to. Mm. Okay. All right. So we're going to do a Tabata. We're going to start with a Tabata, 45 seconds of work to 15 seconds of rest. So yeah, it is the longer Tabata. You get a whole extra five seconds of rest time, but you have an additional, God, like 25 seconds of work from the usual. Uh, and we're gonna do three exercises today. Usually I've just been doing two, but I think today we're gonna do three. Um, and we're gonna start just because I can't stop thinking about it with lunge to the hand or elbow. So coming back into the same lunge that we did in the warm up, and then doing one of three things just coming down onto one hand, so it's the opposite hand from the forward leg, or down to the hand and then all the way down to the elbow, or bypass the hand completely and down to the elbow. And then we push back up to standing, go back with the other leg, same thing. We just go back and forth. So we don't have to move quickly, all right? We don't have to move quickly, uh, but we're really getting deeper into the stretch and really getting to open up the hip flexor. All right, so that is exercise one. Number two is gonna be our chaturanga to downward dog. And yes, I am still not a yoga teacher. So this is just uh, the descriptor that I use because I uh, have taken yoga classes. So from our front plank, coming down as if we're doing a push-up, when you're almost to the floor, leave the hips by the floor, but extend the arms, looking up at the ceiling, and push back into the downward dog, then back into the plank and repeat. Uh, you may know a slightly different version, again, from yoga classes, and that's fine. If you default into that, go for it. It's essentially the same thing, um, but uh, this is just, the, the way that I've modified it for my own class. And then third is going to be our slow leg lowers, which we haven't done in a while. So legs straight up towards the ceiling and we are contracting our core and introducing a tilt in the pelvis. So we flatten the lower back completely against the floor and you can check just using your fingertips to make sure you can't, uh, there's no wiggle room between your lower back and floor. And then we just start slowly lowering the legs, stopping every 15 to 20 degrees, holding for two seconds, and then again, and hold, and again, and hold, and again, and hold. And if you get all the way down there, and your back hasn't come up from the ground, then you can just start reversing that whole thing. 
But if at any point your lower back detaches, just reset, okay? And that gives you information about your core strength. The reason we love this exercise is because we can't really compensate with other muscle groups. All right, so we've got our lunge to the hand or elbow. We've got our uh, chaturanga to downward dog. And we've got our slow leg lower. So hopefully you've had some water. Hydration, hydration, hydration. Remember, it's 15 seconds of rest, so if you're like, oh, did I miss the sound? No, you haven't. It just takes longer. Knock, knock, knock. But now we are getting ready, getting set, and moving into the stretch. So this is obviously none of these exercises that we're doing in this set are exercises where we need to be moving super quickly, okay? So we can take a fairly measured pace and relax. Well, not relax, but we're not trying to rush. We're not trying to get, oh, I've got to get as many reps in here as possible uh, because you want to be able to stretch safely and standing back up to that front leg, making sure the core is engaged. That'll help you to pull the entire apparatus back up to that standing position. All right, now for our chaturangas. And remember, with any of the exercises that have us on our hands and have the palms of our hands flat against the floor, if you have wrist issues, you may need to modify so that you're doing these from, uh, from a closed fist or using uh, push-up handles or dumbbells just to help keep your wrists a little straighter. And if that is something that resonates to you, then you don't need my permission. Go ahead and make that modification. We talk about that a lot. The fact that it's important that you know what modifications you need to make to different types of movements uh, in order to keep yourself safe based on your injury map and just based on your overall strength, stamina, flexibility, etc., etc. And that's the thing, right? You are, you are the person who knows your body best. You are the person who exists in your body, all right? And even if I don't mention a modification, you need to feel confident in your ability to look at an exercise and go, okay, I can do that, but I need to modify it a little bit, all right? And I'm talking about modifying movement types, not specific exercises, because there are so many exercises that we do that, for example, require you to be in that sort of uh, really hyperflex wrist position or hyperextended wrist position. And uh, I can't cover all of them. So, you know, the easier thing to know is whenever there's an exercise like that, if you have wrist issues and you're struggling with uh, pain or twinges, then you have the ability to modify to do the exercise up from the fists or using push-up handles, okay? Um, and that's just something for you to know and for you to bring into any activity that you do, okay? Because 
Your teacher is not always going to remember to tell you what modifications can be made. So you need to know that information and you need to feel confident in making those modifications. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes we come across uh, instructors who uh, saw one too many, you know, army movies and think that they're supposed to be boot camp instructors. Um, and you need to have the confidence in yourself and the knowledge of the importance of your own safety to push back against anybody who comes to you and tries to bully you or be like, no, you're, you're, you're supposed to be doing it this way. You're supposed to be, uh, you know, pushing up the intensity. You're go, 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 you know, all that crap. Uh, you need to feel confident in yourself so that you can be like, no, I can't. I have to modify this exercise so that I can perform it safely. And that is what I'm gonna do, okay? Because we are experts to a point, but we are not the be all end all. And we are certainly not the experts in your injury history, in your movement history, uh, because you are the one living in your body, okay? So that's something to really keep in mind. Um, in any class that you do, in any activity that you do, the more that you can learn about yourself and your injury map and the more that you can learn about the types of modifications that you can make to different exercises to make them safer for yourself, the easier it will be to keep yourself safe in any new activity that you do. And I'm not saying that you need to get, go out there and get, you know, personal trainer certification and all of this stuff. No, that's why we go to classes so that we have access to that knowledge. So find teachers that you trust and ask them those questions. Find professionals that you trust and ask them, okay, so, you know, I used to sprain my ankle a lot, you know, and now I have sort of weak, weak ankles. What can I do to strengthen them? What should I pay attention for? Uh, you know, modifying exercises or, you know, wrist or shoulder issues or things like that. You know, come to us and ask for that information, file that information, and then use it no matter where you go, okay? No matter what you're doing. And uh, that, this is how we become better without all needing to be experts in all of the physiological information, all of the anatomy information, all of that stuff. Like, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to have a degree. But as you learn information, you, and you do need to learn information that is going to be uh, relevant to you, you, your movement types, your injury history, uh, the activities that you're trying to do, etc., etc. So, yeah, we want to learn as much as we can, um, and the more we learn, the better we will be at not hurting ourselves when we try new things. Okay, and the other side of that coin is whenever you try new things. Come to it as a complete newcomer. Even if you've been working out or doing some activity type for you know decades and you're really expert in that activity type, awesome, super cool. That doesn't mean you're expert in every movement type or every activity type. And it can be really easy for us to feel a little, a little, a little cocky about these things and be like, oh, well, I'm an expert. I don't need to, I don't need to worry about that. And uh, yeah, actually you do, because uh, if you're trying something that you've never tried before and you don't have information about the safety protocol, then you may injure yourself like I did when I started doing 
free weight exercises. Ugh, fun times. All right. <laughs> okay, my friends. That was a lovely starting place right there. Oh, man. Okay. We're gonna, you know, I'm really liking the, the 45-15s today. I think we're, we're going to continue with that. Not necessarily three exercises each time, but we're gonna continue with that and we're just, we're gonna try to focus in on exercises that really are strength and stamina and not requiring a ton of jumping around, all right? So it's hit class, but a little less cardio focused hit class. Um, so let's do another 45-15. And let's see what exercises we want to do. Um, oh boy, do we want to do that? No, you know what we haven't done in a while? So first one, hey, I think I, uh, uh, I talked about this in the warm up, but we're going to do that wide squat position, held, our hands and forearms are pressed together so we do not get to lever our knees out using the pressure from our hands. So you have to engage the musculature in your hips particularly and pull those knees back. And you don't have to turn your feet out as far as I am. So one of the things that can help if you're like, I just cannot maintain that, turn your feet in a little bit, okay? So the, again, modifications that we can make so that we are being safe when we are performing the exercise, right? All right, so that was exercise number one. Uh, exercises two and three, I think are going to be uh, side planks from the elbow. So coming up onto that elbow, you want the shoulder directly over it. So we've got that nice perpendicular line between the upper arm and the ground, extending those legs out to the side, other arm straight up towards the ceiling and just hold there. Don't let the hips dip down. And then we'll do it again on the other side. All right. So held wide squat and then side plank side one and side plank side two so this is going to be a lot of held positions breathing is going to be super important all right we still need oxygen even when we're doing held positions there's a tendency to be like well i don't want to you know knock myself out of this position, so I'll just hold my breath, and that'll help me hold the hold the position. But our muscles are still working and working really hard. Okay, even uh, even though they're not moving, even though our limbs aren't moving, so we still need that oxygen going through all parts of our body so that we're able to continue uh, breaking down our energy stores into usable fuel sources, okay? So, nice deep breaths. You learn how to breathe in a way that does not tip you out of the position, okay? And that is hard, <laughs> but we get there. We get there again. We're constantly learning and that's okay. We are not here trying to jump to the top of the mountain right off the bat, all right? We are absolutely going to go the slow and steady route and uh, that is okay. All right, so for our side planks, you need to make sure that you're pushing up through the shoulder. Okay, so you don't want to be sinking down towards the floor. That shoulder needs to be engaged. It needs to be strong and stable, okay? And so pay attention, making sure that you're not slowly sinking down in the shoulder socket, okay? One of the things we talk about a lot is really paying attention to strengthening and stabilizing 
our shoulder joints because this is our most unstable joint. And it's for a reason. It's not like a bad thing because it gives us this joint with incredible range of motion and that's awesome. But it means that we have to pay closer attention to uh, stabilizing it and you know, strengthening, engaging those muscles when we are doing exercises that don't need that range of motion and in fact will be harmed by it, okay? So that's the first place I want you to focus on as we finish out this first run through these exercises. We're gonna have two more soon. <laughs> I don't know exactly where we are in this armor. There we are. <sighs> All right. So second verse, same as the first. And uh, again, whenever we start an exercise, we check in on that form. We want the form to be just as good in the third run through these exercises as it is in the first one, okay? So you need to make sure that you're not here, oh, my knees are going a little bit forward, oh, my lower back is curving a little bit. You, no, 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 that's not, that's not the price of doing business. If you're feeling that, I would much rather you stop and reset and find an easier version of the exercise to hold and start with. Start here, build up that strength, and then move to the next version, okay? Um, and uh, yeah, it's important because frequently we try to just muscle through and that is a fast track to injury. All right, so our second time going through our side planks. Now what I want you to focus on is making sure that the hips are not dipping, sinking towards the floor, because that's what happened. You know, we're held up here, and then these muscles start to get tired, and the hips start coming down towards the floor. So one of the visual techniques that I talk about is imagining that you have a string attached to your hip and pulling up into the ceiling, right? There's a puppeteer up there. And they're pulling that string up and that is helping to keep pulling your hip up, okay? Um, and, uh, and that's going to help you to maintain the position because it gives you something to visualize, something to remind you uh, to keep that hip pulling up towards the ceiling rather than sinking down towards the floor. Visualization is a really great tool for a lot of this work. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it sounds a little weird, but so much of our fitness work is, uh, is taking place in our brains, you know. When you start a new program or new class, a new activity, and you have like those first couple of weeks where you feel like you're getting better in leaps and bounds, that's primarily because your brain is laying down neural pathways that are like, okay, this is how I do this exercise. Your brain is learning how to do the exercise, and it is, and because of that, it doesn't have to use as much active processing, and so uh, you're then able to focus more of your energy on, you know, improve, you know pushing a little for a little more strength or a little more stamina uh, or holding a little bit longer and stuff like that. But a lot of those gains are driven by the brain. The brain learning what is being asked of it and filing it away and then retasking that processing that it was previously using to be like, okay, what the hell are we doing? To then be like, okay, how can we improve? what we're doing, okay? So the brain is a hugely important component of our fitness. And it, it and that goes for visualization techniques. 
you know, because we can start the process just with the brain. Uh, one of the exercises that I talk about this a lot in are shrimps, because shrimps are an exercise that requires a lot of isolation, uh, the ability to move uh, certain body parts that are a little more tied together without the rest of the body coming along with them. And that gets really difficult. And so one of the things I'd recommend if you're having issues with that exercise and just not feeling like you're performing it correctly is to do a component of it. Uh, so for that exercise, the boat rocks. And then just visualize what you want to be doing uh, each time your shoulders roll off the floor, each time your hips roll off the floor. And using that to train your brain so that then uh, when you try the exercise again, your brain has already started building those pathways just because you were using it to visualize, to imagine what you wanted the body to do uh, for the exercise. And that really does work, it really does work. So while we're here, we're really trying to keep those hips up, pulling up towards the ceiling. Imagine that string, it's tied to your hip. You maybe have another one on the fingertips of the arm that's reaching towards the ceiling and they're just pulling upwards, keeping you lifted, keeping that shoulder lifted. And now, now we can relax. All right, woo! Let's get some water, my friends. Holy cow. All right. There we go. I've been talking too much and not hydrating enough. Dang it. Hopefully y'all are doing better, <laughs> better at the hydration. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is feeling good. This is feeling, feeling like a good class. A good, like really, truly strength focused and stamina focused today. Uh, and that's, that's always nice. That's our goal. That's our goal here. Okay. Let's see here. What do we want to do next? Um, I'm really liking these 45 15s. Yeah, this is an intense class, but I like it. Um, so let's see here. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's do, hmm, let's just do some squats with the knee raise. Okay, so not the aerobic knees just a standard knee raise. So taking your feet somewhere between hip and shoulder width apart, squat down, and then stand up onto one leg, lifting the other knee up, then down and other side, okay? Having our core engaged is gonna help us pull the knee up and also maintain the integrity of the balance, okay? So that's one. Uh, exercise two. You know what? I was talking about shrimps, and now we're going to do them. Now we're going to do them because shrimps are fun. So uh, we are going to. This knot is just like not quite placed correctly. I might move these puzzle pieces over slightly. Uh, Sorry, I'm just, now I'm just futzing, futzing with my mat. Uh, come on. Yeah, I know. There we go. Shoot. All right. Let's see if this is a better position for that. I think it will be. All right, so, yeah, yeah. So our shrimps. We love them. We come back onto the, do I need to turn around now? Maybe this will work. I don't know. I may, this may not change. 
a damn thing, but maybe it will. So, shoulders, then hips, shoulders, then hips. So we're rocking. So if you need to start with just the boat rock, that's fine. Just curving the lower back and doing really small rocks up and down and visualizing that every time your shoulders come off the floor, you want to move them in the direction you're traveling. Every time your hips come off the floor, you want to do the same thing, okay? So, shoulders, then hips, shoulders, then hips, shoulders, then hips, and when you hit the end of the mat, you just start going back the way you came, all right? Uh, okay, so squats with the knee raise, shrimps, and then, uh, do we want to do? What else do we want to do? Uh, I think we'll just do those two for this one. That's what I'm feeling. That's what I'm feeling for this one. Rather than spend a ton of time trying to trying to figure out a third exercise, because it's definitely not a morning where my brain is working at peak capacity to design. So and that's okay. Again. Again, we meet ourselves where we are in any given day, and we use that to inform our movement. And that's great, okay? All right, getting into position, getting ready, getting set, and going. So, we will feel some core activation. This may not be the uh, aerobic sneeze with the active turn, of the torso generated by the obliques, but you will still feel the lower abdominals have a part to play in helping to pull that knee up. And uh, the whole core is a really important stabilizing muscle group for balance, okay? So we have our entire core working even though the focus of this exercise is the legs, is the squat, okay? That does not mean that we are not uh, engaging a lot in our core, all right? We talk about that a lot, you know. Again, we are, we're not like, uh, we're not a system that works, uh, we, we don't use only one muscle group, there we go. We don't use only one muscle group when we're doing an activity. Any exercise that we're doing is integrating a ton of different muscle groups to greater or lesser degrees in performing the exercise. And so, when, even though we may be focusing primarily on one group, the other groups are still doing a ton. And we want to pay attention to that. And we want to honor that. Um, and we want to make sure that we're being just as safe with those activities as we are with, uh, with everything else. Uh, Oh, you are just, yep, well, not surprised. These puzzle pieces are, are fascinating. They're like, it's not a perfect puzzle. Um, and so frequently I end up with, uh, I end up with pieces that are just a little bit confused as to their life choices, where they're supposed to be. Um, and, and then I get confused about my life choices and where I'm supposed to be. And yeah, it's, it is a very useful tool and I'm very glad that I have them. But I definitely sometimes am just like, what's happening right now? Because I'm not entirely sure. All right, round two of tramps. That's right, I forgot we were only doing two exercises in my head. I was like, okay, so I'm waiting for the third exercise. No, wait, we're only doing two this time. Uh, and like, I do really like the sets where we are just focusing on two exercises 
and going back and forth between them because, you know, variety is super useful, and obviously I talk about it a ton, but also it takes a lot more brain power the more exercises that we are trying to integrate into a workout timer. So sometimes I like to focus the energy a little bit more to exercises to sort of that perfect place where we are getting that variation, we're keeping our brains engaged and interested in what's going on, but we're not trying to balance a ton of different things. Um, and that can be really nice. And not all the time, sometimes we really do want that extra challenge. And that's totally great as well. Um, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's nice to feel a little bit more uh, focused in uh, on what we're doing. So obviously we did a ton of that in April Powers. Basically all of the timers were two exercise timers. And we were just going back and forth between the exercises. And, uh, you know, I want to, now that we're in, you know, new month and we're out of that programming cycle, I want to play around a little bit more. But I will also want to, you know, return to the oldies but goodies because there is a reason why we like them. <laughs> and it's important. It's important to play around, to have fun. And that's the thing, you know, movement and exercise should be fun in some way. And, you know, there are, it's so subjective. And that's great because it means that everybody can sort of define what enjoyment they get out of activities for themselves. And some people uh, really like the activity itself. You know, some people are like, uh, yeah, this is my jam. Some people uh, are, you know, they get their engagement from working with a bunch of other people and sort of getting that inspiration and that energy from the people around them. Some people are not honestly crazy about the experience of exercise itself, but really enjoy the health benefits and the outcomes and that enjoyment is enough to inspire them to do different activities. And all of those are totally legit reasons to enjoy working out, okay? You do not have to enjoy, in the traditional sense, doing burpees, but hopefully, you enjoy, say, feeling your strength increase, you know? Doing those burpees every, every class and more and more finding uh, that you're feeling stronger, you're feeling more secure. That may be where you get your enjoyment from exercise. Um, or maybe you have a friend or a loved one that you work out with and the, you enjoy a little bit of friendly competition and sort of both of you, you know, challenging each other and inspiring each other to, uh, to, to work a little harder and to, you know, set more intensive goals. Like, all of these are great reasons to work out and to enjoy working out. And, um, you know, my tagline from the beginning has been the best workout is the thing you enjoy and can stick with. Um, and that, that, is, that second part is just as important, you know? Like, I'm not over here really ranking 
exercise. There are different types of activities that are going to be more effective depending on, you know, what your goals are and what you enjoy doing. But, uh, you know, if you can't stick with it consistently, then maybe it's not the activity that's going to be good for you. You know, if, if what you can stick with consistently is I go for a 30 minute walk every day or an hour long walk every day. Um, and that's the thing I can stick with consistently. Then you are ahead of the curve. All right. There's a, there's a YouTube channel called healthcare triage, um, that I have followed for a while. And the man who runs it, Dr. Aaron Carroll, um, he, he talks about how like to get the basic health benefits, a 20 minute daily walk is going to be enough. Okay. Um, and that for many of us is just parking a little farther away from, uh, from an office or from, you know, a location and getting a walk in like, if all you have time for in a day is a 20 minute walk, you're doing great. That's awesome. Okay. All the rest of this stuff is just gravy and it's great. And you know, I have a lot of fun with this. Obviously I wouldn't be doing this professionally if I didn't, but the thing that you can stick with is always going to be more valuable than, oh, but I should do this activity because uh, you know, it's better for me or, you know, everybody I know does it or like, you know, no, if, if you don't enjoy it or you can't do it consistently, like don't beat yourself up on that. Find something that you can. Okay. And then you can build. Cause that's the thing too. A lot of times we just, we need to build towards, uh, towards more diversified exercise schedules. All right. We need to build towards fitting more exercise in over the course of a week than we're doing currently. We don't, this is why I hate talking about new year's resolutions because there it's a cold Turkey start methodology that is so ineffective for most people. Not everybody. Some people can really just like, you know, decide one day, all right, I'm going to work out five days a week doing, you know, this activity and bam, they're doing it. Some people can't do that. Many of us can't. Okay. And trying to hold ourselves to that standard is a freaking losing battle. So build up, you know, it's awesome to have a goal. It's awesome to be like, I really do truly want to be, you know, running, uh, three days a week or something like that, or working out five days a week, start with one day a week, you know, start with, or start with, okay, I can walk five days a week. Cool. I can start there. Now maybe I'll sub out one of the walks for a class, but keep the rest walks build towards the goal. Don't try and leapfrog to the top of the summit. Okay. Oh my goodness. I've just been lecturing a ton and I'm running a little bit behind schedule. Let's do a quick, uh, a quick Tabata to finish out a little bit more cardio and then let's do some stretching because I could definitely use it. All right. So we're just going to do our standard 2010 eight intervals. Uh, I'm going to give you dealer's choice again. That's, that's two classes this week. So dealer's choice, you choose what exercise you want to do. And then you're doing that for all eight sets. And that's how we will end class. And then we'll do a little stretching because I definitely could use it. So as per usual, I frequently default to flying chickens for this. I really enjoy that as an exercise to finish up class. And if you're doing a jumping exercise, pay attention to how you're landing. So it's like flying chickens and jumping jacks. There can definitely be a tendency to try and land on a on a straight knee, on a straight leg. And that obviously puts a lot of pressure on your knees. So you want to maintain 
just a little bit of bend, just a little bit of give, so that it's landing more safely. Of course, if you're doing a different ex exercise right now that is not jumping related, then file that information away in the, uh, I'll use this the next time I do flying chickens folder, and go about your business. <laughs> But the goal of the final Tabata class is to be like, okay, I am going to dig in and find those last pockets of energy, and I'm going to leave them all on the mat because I have nothing else that I need to uh, save that energy for. Nothing else coming down the pipeline. It is just time for me to go, okay, uh, I'm finishing out. I can see that finish line. So I don't need to keep those reserves. I don't need to keep that rainy day supply of energy. I'm gonna use it all and get myself to the finish line. We are halfway through. Uh, how you feeling? Doing good, feeling, feeling strong as we finish out class. And, and we haven't done a ton of cardio stuff today. So this is really going out with a bit of a bang, um, which is always fun. Always nice to, I don't know what that tiny little hop at the end there was. <laughs> always nice to end with a little bit of additional challenge and again whenever I give you these challenges I'm going to be pushing but I want you to always remember that you have the power to determine what challenges you want to focus on today okay and some days that challenge is just, I just want to try and keep moving the whole time. I can't really focus on anything else. And cool. If that is what you need to do today, then that's golden. All right? Either way, we're getting those cheerleaders out. Put them on the floor next to your mat, next to your TV, your laptop, whatever you're using to stream this class. They're doing their best floor routine. They're tumbling, they're cartwheeling, because you've gotten to the end of an hour-long class, nice, intense strength and stamina class, and you have done such a good job, and you're gonna go through the rest of your day and have a great day knowing that you kicked it off with some exercise. Woo! Okay, good job, everybody. All righty. Alrighty, let's do some stretching, shall we? Uh, so, everybody, onto the mats. Let's start getting a little hip stretching in here. So, soles of the feet together, knees dropping apart. Uh, and remember, the goal as we fold over is we want to get the lower back as close to the thighs as possible to really intensify the stretch in the hips. So don't just, you know, curve over like that. That kind of defeats the purpose. Try and start in a flat back position and walk your hands forward, bringing that back down as low as you can. You're not going to maintain a perfect flat back, and that's not the goal. The goal is to maintain as much of one as possible to remind you to keep bringing the lower back along with you. And then, once you get far enough down, you can finally let the head release over. Shake that neck out just a little bit. Make sure you're not clenching your neck muscles. And we're gonna take our four deep breaths. Here we go. That's one.
that's two. That's three. And four. And roll up. And now we're gonna do our pretzel stretch. Yeah, so to get into this, leg one, we're gonna let the knee fall against the floor, bring the heel to the outside of the opposite hip, okay? That's leg one. Leg two, we're gonna keep the knee pointing straight up towards the ceiling, bring the foot to the outside of the opposite knee. All right, that's leg two. We're gonna take the opposite arm of leg two, wrap it around that knee, and pull it into our chest. So we're getting a nice stretch on the side of the hip. And then we're gonna add a twist into the spine by looking behind and away from this arm. And I'm gonna reach my other arm out behind me just to help deepen that twist a little bit, okay? So let's take four deep breaths right here, just in this position. Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. And now we bring our sh shoulders back to the front. And for leg two, we're gonna bring that ankle up onto the knee, keeping the foot flexed to protect this other knee, because now we're gonna fold over and just get an even deeper stretch in the hip and going a little bit into the hamstring. And let's take our four deep breaths here, okay? Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. All right. Roll back up. Let's bring that foot down to the ground. Let's unfold this leg. Shake those knees out just a little bit, okay? There we go. And now other side. So same thing, leg one. Knee against the floor, heel on the outside of the opposite hip. Leg two, knee pointing up towards the ceiling. Foot flat on the floor, right on the outside of that knee. Take this arm, wrap it around the knee, pull, hug it into your chest, feel that stretch in the hip. Then we add the twist by looking away from this arm, reaching the other arm out behind us to intensify the twist. And let's take four deep breaths right here. Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. Turn back around. Bring this ankle up onto the knee, keeping the foot flexed. Again, we want to protect this knee. And we're going to fold over. And we're going to take four deep breaths here. Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. 
That's three. And four. Roll up. Bring this ankle down. Unfold this leg. Shake those knees out a little bit. Oh man, I want to keep going, but unfortunately, I do have some stuff I need to get done this morning. So I think that will be the end. The end of class, the end of stretching. Oh, I've not drunk nearly enough water. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Oh gosh, good class. Good Saturday morning class, my friends. I, this is always just such a good pick me up for uh, for the beginning of the day. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, Cause yeah, now I feel like I have all this energy. I'm gonna go through the rest of the day. It's gonna be great. Um, and this is the end of our broadcast week for, uh, for this week. First post rest week, first post April powers. Woo to all of that. <laughs> um, yeah, so we will be back again next week with our usual schedule, uh, usual with the updated times. So what is now our usual schedule? So Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time for Perpetual Motion, the class where we never stop moving. Wednesdays at 4.30 p.m. for Jump Around, our weekly cardio class. Fridays at 5 p.m. for Functional Home Fitness, where we do weight training using objects you can find around the house. And then coming back around to Saturday morning at 9 a.m. for the weekend kickoff. Yeah, good times. Hope to see you at some or all of those classes. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All those handles will be my end cards, but they are all variations on Blanche Case Fitness. My YouTube channel is where I upload all the VODs from these streams, so you never have to miss a class, even if you can't make the live cast. So definitely head over there and subscribe. They go up on Sundays, so they'll all be dropping tomorrow for this past week. If you want to help support me financially in making these streams, I have a coffee account for one-time donations, or you can subscribe to this channel if you're able to support more long-term. Either way, your donations are always very much appreciated. And if you want to help me keep growing this channel and this community, then please tell your friends, loved ones, coworkers, anyone looking for an awesome fitness class. I stream four days a week. We have a great community here, and the more, the merrier. All right, so everybody finish off that water. If you're like me, you've not hydrated enough yet. Finish off that water, fill it again. Keep hydrating yourself. Get a good breakfast. Start replenishing those glycogen stores. Go take that celebratory post-workout shower. And I will see you all back here again on Tuesday. Mwah. Have a great day.